Hello everybody, welcome back to Renderbots. My name is James and today we're going to be looking at cameras inside of Cinema 4D. So we won't hesitate, let's jump straight in and take a look. So here we are in Cinema. Now the first thing we're going to do is bring up something for the camera to have a look at. So let's go to MoGraph and let's go to Text. Now as you see I've got a text box on the screen here and I can move it around using this little arrow here. So the first thing I'll do is I'll type in here uh, render bots like that. And now I'll choose a font. Click on this. Let's get to the top here. I've got this kind of cool Super Mario but looking one here. Now before I go any further, I'm going to change the camera angle because obviously we're recording this for a HD video. So to do that, I'm going to click on my little icon here. This takes us to the render window and we can click on this preset here, make it for film and choose this here. Okay, give that a click. Cool, and we'll just say all frames while we're here. Okay, all frames while we're there. That's what we're gonna do, just, just so we got the camera aspect ratio correct before we start. And as you can see, we can now see that we've got uh, RenderBots in its full glory there. So what I'm gonna do is just pull my camera out slightly so we can see how big this RenderBots is, using my camera tools here just to navigate. Now, um, what I'm going to be doing is I have an animation camera and I have a free flow camera. Okay, so the animation camera will be static and we ought to be looking at the object. The free flow will allow me to move it around the screen without interfering with the animation. So, um, stick with me, I'm sure this is going to make sense. So, the first thing I do is um, introduce a new camera. So, this is our camera icon. We'll give it a click. It says camera, and you see you've got lots of cameras inside here, so we're going to click on this one here. And straight away it gives us the camera. Now actually, we're not looking through the camera lens at the moment. So if I rotate around here, you can see that uh, my camera is all the way over there. And it's represented by this little uh, nugget here. It's got the two spools on the top there as well. So I'm not looking through that lens at the moment. I've introduced a camera, but I've not actually got that uh, looking through it. Now to look through this camera, all I've got to do is click on this icon here. And suddenly I'm now looking through the lens of that camera. Give another click, it turns black, and I'm, and I'm sort of just um, using like what I call a free flow camera. Okay, so um, let's give it a click. So we're now inside of that camera. Now what we can do is we're gonna pull um, the camera forward. Let's level up a little bit like that. And what we're gonna do is have our sort of first camera sweep across the whole of this text. Now to do that, we're gonna sort of look at um, creating some animation down here and under animation window down here. Uh, as you see, it's 90 frames, so we can change this all the way up to maybe uh, 325. So just type in here 325, press enter, and suddenly we see that our animation window is very, very small. Now if I click and drag that to the right, there you go, we can now see we've got the full um, flow across to here now. See that? Cool. Now to get this animation done, we've got to put a keyframe inside of here. So if I give that a click now, okay, because I'm looking through the camera lens, it's put a little keyframe right here. Now what I've got to do is uh, move my um, animation all the way to, let's go to 141, or 140, let's go to 140, there we go. And all I'm going to do now is pull my camera to the end of the text, like so. Okay, cool. Let's give it a little bit of a twist there so we can see render bots is in the full size there. There you go, let's come out a little bit to there. Okay, so I'm happy with that end result. Now to lock this last keyframe in, I'm just gonna press the keyframe animation button there. Cool, okay, so if I hit rewind now and press play, magic. <clears throat> there we go. Okay, cool, so that's my first camera movement inside of there. So what I'm going to do now is introduce, that would obviously be simple enough for us now to, um, I don't know, hit the render button, have a look at that. Cool, we could render that out, no problem at all. But what if I want to bring in another camera now? So we want to introduce another camera. So let's click on our camera icon again. Let's click on camera here. Okay, so we can see we've got camera here and camera one. So I'm going to double click on camera one. We'll make this camera two. Press enter. And you see the white box is still sitting on camera one there. So if I click on camera two, we're now looking through that camera lens. It was looking through the same one the previous one was, but if I move it around, 
you see that there's my camera there now if I hit rewind whoops um, okay so if I hit rewind now and press play we can see what the camera's doing isn't it good because we're looking through camera two's lens now okay so we're happy with that now what we've got to do here is look at keyframe uh, it stops at 140 as we mentioned before now I'm gonna set this up for 141 okay so with that camera I'm gonna actually um, just looking through camera two now is I'm gonna start it somewhere in the middle here like this okay so just putting camera two into uh, situ there now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on the keyframe button now and remember we're looking through camera two's lens so with the keyframe done on 141 I'm going to drag my play range all the way to 320 uh, that's 320 perfect that one there and just simply um, zoom out there we go so we've got it all in shot there let's come over here to the bit perfect let's hit our little um, keyframe button there boosh okay so let's have a little look at some look perfect so that's great so from 141 Give that a play. It comes out to there. Good job. Now, if I hit rewind, you can see that the first camera's doing what it does, then the second camera goes through its thing. So, how do we flick between these two? Say this is going to be a complex animation and I wanted it to uh, render overnight and I didn't want to have to come and do each camera angle individually. Um, well, very simply, what we've got to do is we've got to introduce something called a stage. Now, if I click on this icon up here, you'll see the word stage. Okay, so now we've got the word stage up here. Okay, now this is going to enable the animation to be uh, flicked between the two cameras without needing us here. So what we've got to do with the word stage there, we're going to grab our first camera and we're going to drop camera into the word camera here. Okay, so we've clicked and hold and brought it in. Now you see that little icon's just lit up there with that there. I'm gonna hold down the control key and just put a little keyframe in there. So I've held that control and just put a little click inside of there. Now, what I've got to do is just move this all the way to the end game, which I think is set to well, 140. Let's have a look, there it is there. And I'm gonna hit the little keyframe button there again. Okay, so that's now locked in the first camera. Now, when I move this to camera 141, I'm going to bring in camera 2. Click and hold, drag it inside there. Hit our little control key again on that point. OK. Drag this through into here, into its end game. All right, 320. And again, just hold down the control key and click that little button there. Now, hopefully, when we press uh, uh, rewind, there we go there's our first bit and there's our second bit so the stage set it's able now to flick between both cameras again you might need to rewind that a little bit uh, just to see again what I was doing there hopefully that was clear enough guys uh, apologies for my dogs <laughs> uh, once again they're going wild when I decide to record but actually see that's a really cool thing to do with uh, using multiple cameras Okay, on our next section, we're now going to look at um, something called a target camera. And um, we're going to be able to um, get the target camera to move around an object. Uh, again, this will make sense, so bear with me while we get set up. So first of all, let's get a graphic into our scene. We're going to go to Graph again, go to Mode Text, and in here we're going to type in the word Hi. Okay, let's go over to here, let's pick a nice uh, font. Anything will do. Uh, Don't we got all these sorted before we start? Power cord. There we go. A big chunky high there. <clears throat> okay, so we've got our high inside of there. Okay, and uh, I'm going to bring my camera, and again we can use a target camera there. So what the target is doing, say, it says, um, "Tell me um, what you want me to look at." See so if I click on there, it says, you know, at the moment, um, if I look you'll see the camera is kind of looking at the high, but actually I want it to be sort of make sure it tracks it. And this will make sense again in a second. So what I'm gonna do with that target highlighted, I'm gonna grab hold of the Motex and drag it into the word target object. 
Okay, so now that is now looking at that and we'll constantly look at that. Now, why do I want to do that? Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this um, camera to rotate around while looking at that word. So to do this, I'm going to grab a spline, which is a circle. Okay, so circles, there it is. And what I'm going to do is down on the plane here, we're going to follow this through and make it X to Z like that. Perfect, there we go. And um, let's have a little look. Now what we want to do is make sure the high is in the middle of there. So if I drag the, oh, we'll leave that there. It is. We're going to drag all the motex, which is the high there, and drag it so it kind of sits in the middle there. Yeah, would agree. It was probably in the middle there. Perfect. So what we're going to do now is we're going to get this camera to be in the inside of this spline, so it's going to rotate around it. And to do this, we click on the camera. We go to the word tags, Cinema 4D tags, and you see this aligned spline. Give it a click. OK. And the camera says, OK, um, I've now got a line to spline. It says down here, tell me where the spline is. Show me where it is. So very simply, grab the circle spline and give it a click. Boom. See that straight away now? It's going to be on that spline. OK. And we see the minute I clicked on that sort of aligned to spline, we've got the word position down here. If I click and hold, we can see. Look at that. Cool. It's going to go all the way around the word high. OK, now I need to animate this so it's going to align to that spline. And again, to do this, let's go back to zero. Uh, all I've got to do now is tell this uh, with this little um, key here, before, as we did before. We're going to hold down the control key, give it a click. And what it says is at position zero, at frame zero, that's its position. Now, if I move this all the way to the end, OK, and very simply now change this to 100%. Uh, give it a click and now it should now have that built in voila there we go and as you see the reason why target is because it now knows to look at that entity now what we can do is is look what's happening with that camera so if I give us a click here we can now see what the camera's actually looking at which isn't quite right is it? it's um, it's a little bit too close it's also quite high as well so if I press pause there the first thing I do is go to my circle uh, go to my sort of uh, scale here and I'm going to sort of grab this and make this a lot bigger. Okay, so if I jump back to my can view, remember, click on the black bar there and we see what that's looking at. Yeah, it's pretty good, right? Um, okay, let's press play and have a little look. Yeah, so as you see, it says a nice fluid 360 around the object. I'll pause that, hit rewind. Again, um, take the camera off by giving it a click. And what we're going to do is we're going to lift the spine up so it sits a little bit higher. So click on our sort of move tool and we can grab that spline so it's a little bit halfway up. Let's check the camera again by clicking the camera icon. Yeah, maybe a little bit more. Check that camera icon. Mm, let's press play. Perfect. So there you go. And of course, what's great um, when we look at splines is the fact that we've got loads of splines to actually um, to, to use. Um, one of them is called the, uh, let's have a little look. <clears throat> it's called the Helix here. So one of them's called the Helix. If I give the Helix a click, you can see again, it's kind of put that on there. So if I just sort of hide the circle for a second, there's my Helix. And what I can do is with the Helix highlighted, uh, go to plane, Tap to X and Z again. There you go, X and Z. And what I can do is go to my target on the camera here. Instead of choosing, um, sorry, the align key, so it's aligned to the circle at the moment, I can just drag the helix in. There we go. Okay, so when I press play now, <laughs> there you go. Very cool. Again, the camera's constantly looking at that high button. So let's go and look and see what that camera's looking at now. Probably can sense a little bit giddy. So as you see, it's actually cycling its way all the way to the top. Again, with the Helix, what's really cool is that, um, let's just pause that. We can increase the size of that Helix. There we go. So we can really make it like, like the whole camera is on a roller coaster. Uh, let's jump in and we'll watch that again. So it starts at the bottom and finally goes to the top. Really cool for very quick animations. And we know it's going to be a perfect circle when it goes around as well. So there you go, guys. Um, there's some really cool techniques um, 
to do with cameras and actually using multiple cameras, uh, rendering all those out, and again, aligned to spline as well. <clears throat> Thanks very much for watching. Um, I appreciate all your comments. Uh, once again, our subscribers are going up, 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 so please do tell your friends. And of course, as always, uh, you can follow me on Twitter. That's at render underscore uh, bots. Or I've got obviously my website as well. But um, yeah, follow me on Twitter and um, happy rendering. Take care till next time. Bye-bye.